Here, the oceanic plate descends directly under the continental margin. There are no island arcs. Molten rock rises through the continental crust. In time, volcanic mountain ranges are formed. The pressure created by the descending plate causes the land near the coast to fold up deforming the rocks and pushing them even higher to form the jagged ranges of the Andes. Here, perched three miles high, the ruins of Machu Picchu, a city hewn from the Andes itself. Only this rock endures a monument to a passing civilization. The Andes provide a clear illustration of the close relationship between converging plates and mountain building. Rockies and other west coast ranges of North America were formed in a similar way. It's not difficult to imagine how the coastal mountain ranges came to be, but what about the inland Himalayas and Alps stretching from China to Western Europe? Well, if destruction of an ocean basin continues, the continents on the two sides must eventually come together, closing the basin. Since continents are granitic in composition, they float high on their respective plates. They resist the process of destruction characteristic of oceanic plates. Meeting head on, they collide, exerting immense pressures upon each other. Both the continental margins and the marine sediment in between are crumpled and deformed, throwing up a huge mountain range. This was how the great Himalayan mountains were created, also the Alps and the Pyrenees. All this came to pass long before man walked the earth and followed his gods and his dreams into the mountains. The mountains he, in the infinitesimally small span of his life, believed as permanent as his gods, as enduring as eternity. But what happens now? The future of man is perhaps less predictable than that of the Earth itself. Two hundred million years ago, the Earth was composed of one immense ocean and a single supercontinent, Pangaea. The continents to be have roughly their present day shapes. Australia, Antarctica, India, Africa, Asia, North and South America. One hundred and thirty-five million years ago, rifting has separated the supercontinent, and the fragments have started their long journey across the globe.
Today, we know the Mediterranean and the Pacific are getting smaller, the Atlantic and the Red Sea larger. And one thing remains certain, the Earth will change its shape again for man still unborn. The rest is speculation.